He is a wife, mother, and COO of Dallas Weekly, one of the oldest black newspapers in Dallas. And even with so many accomplishments, she has often been concerned about, of all things, her hair. Jessica Washington shares her hair story and how becoming a mom really helped shape her view of what self-love truly means. Let's talk about your hair story. What what are the levels? Unpeel some of those uh, levels for me when it comes to your hair. Absolutely. So there was a definite time in my life where I did not think that I would be able to show my natural hair confidently. I didn't even realize how insecure I was. I do remember blatantly saying in front of my friends who wore their hair naturally that I wasn't about to go down that road. That was something that they did and I was on another path. And I said it with a tone like I was on a better path. You know, like I wasn't gonna be misconstrued with the notion of I have to go this way. It seemed like in the early 2000s, that's when the really trend started saying that like you can be confident and you know, and you can do this. But because I wasn't confident, then I condemned other that were, which is a hater move. When I had my son, I started thinking about the type of woman that I wanted to be to him, like the, and the type of woman I wanted him to bring home. You know, did I want him to bring home somebody who thought the way I did about being insecure and I had to have bone straight hair because nobody will think I'm pretty unless I reflected that type of image. And I just realized I, I needed him to want better. So I have to be better. So explain to a person who, who has no idea what we're talking about. When you go natural, that means not putting chemicals in your hair, but um, cutting it all off in some situations. So explain that portion to me and what that looked like for you, the process. It was definitely just going from bone straight to, um, again, cutting off all of my hair, showing my natural curl. I had to prepare myself when I decided to make a transition that I was gonna be answering a lot of questions. That made me very uncomfortable. And I, I wasn't prepared for that at all, mentally. How did you ultimately prepare yourself in those situations? How did you prepare yourself for that? You have to speak very blatantly to people and not be afraid to let them understand exactly where you're coming from. And so at first I found myself making excuses like, oh, I'm just trying something new. When there was nothing wrong with saying, I don't wanna put dangerous chemicals in my hair anymore, or I just want a different path. This is my hairstyle. And the thing is, they weren't coming at me slanderously. They really didn't know. And I had to match my level of uncomfortability, I guess, uh, with their questions and, and understand that there was, there was a middle ground. It wasn't aggressive. But I mean, I think that I kind of changed some, some views. I, I would like to think so by the time I left that job. Can you help me understand or help others understand why black hair means so much and why we've even gotten to this point. So it's beyond like just the scope that you see. If you have a child next to you that sees a black woman on TV wearing her hair naturally or just even talking about what black hair is in a professional medium or even in a casual medium. Just the fact that we're having the conversation means that it's normal. And so if it's normal, that means you don't have to feel uncomfortable when you see it. If it's normal, you can ask a question without being offensive. You know, so that's why the conversation needs to be had. So everybody can feel more comfortable. Everybody, it goes both ways. You're making me feel more comfortable. It'll be better for you, you understand? So that's the reason why we need to bring some normalcy to black hair, period.